In her new book, Going Rogue, Sarah Palin talks about her faith and her future, and of course, being chosen to run for vice president. In her interview with CBN News, Palin told us what she would have done differently during the campaign and offered up a few frank comments on abortion and other key issues. Here's White House correspondent David Brody. Thank you so much for showing up. This book tour full of rope lines and loud cheers has the feel of a campaign. And in a way, it is. Maybe not so much political as redemptive. The key difference this time around, she's the one in charge. You're getting to call the shots here and kind of do it the way you want to do it. I mean, uh, tell me a little bit about that. I, and I love it. I love <laughs> the liberty. I love the freedom of being yeah. able to say what I want to say and, and, and speak to whomever I want to speak with. So what would she do differently now that she's no longer on what she calls the vice presidential B team? She lays out a few suggestions in her book, among them, reacting quicker to the economic downturn. The economy started crashing there in September and our campaign was very slow to shift gears and kind of shift direction and start talking more about solutions to get America's economy back on the right track. She also disagreed with the McCain team's decision to stay away from Barack Obama's ties to his controversial pastor, Jeremiah Wright. I wanted to talk about um, Jeremiah Wright and, and some of the, the things that I thought were problematic, but uh, we, that was kind of off base and we didn't talk about him. Going rogue has been portrayed in the media as a score settling affair. No, certainly it, it's not a book uh, seeking vengeance or any kind of vindication. It's answering questions that people have asked of me. And um, it, after a year of a lot of false reports out there, I'm excited to have the truth out there. While her critics say she's being petty, a full read of the book shows mostly kind things written about nearly everyone Palin worked with. There is, however, big criticism for McCain's top aides, Steve Schmidt and Nicole Wallace. Remember the rough interview with Katie Couric? Well, Palin claims Wallace pressured her to do it, misrepresented the subject matter, and even told her that Couric suffered from low self-esteem. Wallace has since fired back, saying Palin's account is pure fiction. She said on Rachel Maddow's show last night that she, uh, Sarah Palin, has has hate, hated me from the very oh. beginning, and I, I yeah. I'd like you to maybe respond. No, to that's that. not true at all. But I have gone a year with a lot of Americans having a lot of questions about the strategy, the media strategy in the McCain campaign, and um, this was my opportunity to answer those questions. For Palin, at this point, there's no looking back. She's focused, for now at least, on helping conservatives win in 2010 not tipping her hand on 2012 presidential talk. Now she's speaking out on issues like the health care debate, especially the controversy over abortion funding. It's very complicated and it needs to be made simple. We need to be told as Americans, will there be taxpayer federal dollars going towards uh, this, this procedure abortion or not? It's as simple as that. The majority of Americans don't want to see their tax dollars federal dollars going towards abortion and and I thank the Lord for this we're seeing poll numbers are proving more and more there are more Americans today than there are fewer Americans understanding respecting the sanctity of life and they call themselves pro-life she may sound like a presidential candidate but for now at least the only road ahead of her is filled with adoring fans it may be a sign of things to come David Brody CBN News reporting from Grand Rapids Michigan well, it's selling like hotcakes. Sarah Palin's new book, Going Rogue, um, An American Life, if uh, you want it. It's available in bookstores nationwide. Terry, what do you think here? Do you think she's trying to um, build a base for future political, or is she had enough of this? I don't know, because I, I totally can understand and, and would be able to relate to her wanting to set the record straight. I mean, how awful to have a year of people undermining you, talking about you, accusing you of things, attacking your kids, your family, your values, your state. I mean, mercy. I'm surprised the book's not larger. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty thick as it is. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know what her plans are. It'll be interesting to see. You know, it, yeah. I always... I always marvel at people who willingly put themselves on the cutting block like that. I know it's service to the country, but wow, nowadays politics is such a cutthroat business. What do you think? Um, well, the surprise on, on this one is to once again have 
Um, you know, she said, she said, debates going on between McCain staffers and Governor Palin. Uh, I just find that absolutely amazing because, you know, if, you, if you're within a political party, you sort of, you know, shoot your own. Uh, and so why is that going on at this late date? And why was it going on during the campaign? Uh, that's another one. And McCain staffers post-campaign saying, you know, the whole title going rogue uh, came from them. So mm -hmm. you look at that and go, uh, there's something wrong with that. Uh, at the same time, I agree with you. Anyone that wants to put themselves in the public eye and run for elective office in our country, I definitely tip my hat to them. Uh, because it's more than just a full contact sport. It's become a blood sport. Mm -hmm. uh, and you find that within the parties as you, as you run for nominations. And then uh, you get into the public arena and people just will um, create issues and controversies where none existed in order to tarnish your name. And going negative in our media culture has its effects. And because it's effective, because... We as viewers of media believe this kind of stuff and don't get into the substance of things. Um, that's why it's effective. You know, I, one of the things I like about Sarah Palin is I think she's um, from outside Washington, outside the Beltway, so to speak. I think she's got a fresh perspective. And at the same time, she values the history and the principles that this nation was founded on. And yet you wonder, can somebody go to Washington and stay stay outside of the mess. Do you think so? No. Yeah, well. Um, I've seen that too many times. Good, good luck, Sarah. <laughs> something, ha something that happens to people inside the Beltway, and they just, they, the system itself seems to, to change them and change their way of thinking. So, you almost um, can't work it without entering into it. I mean, it's, it's a system. It's become a system. It's pretty... And there are it's good not. reasons for that, and, the, and there are good reasons for in terms of uh, how do you institute change and the checks and balances within the system, and you need to have experienced legislatures as part of your, your team that um, can fully vet bills before they, they get voted on. But, um, you know, we're, we're certainly not seeing that today. No. There'll, be, um, there'll be a vote tomorrow I in the U.S. Senate though, <laughs> perhaps on happen. something that <laughs> no one knows what in the world they're voting on. All right, well, Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories from the CBS.